Do you have a product or service that sells? Have you turned it evergreen yet? We're going to talk about it on today's podcast. I've spent the last 20 years studying, teaching, and coaching people to find their greatness and take their lives to the next level. Along the way, it's become evident that emotions are at the root of everybody's successes and failures. Worry and fear are the enemies, and it's time to forge the armor and earn the tools to overcome the two things that could single-handedly destroy your future. Hi, my name is Michael Johnson, and I'm a life coach, a peak performance trainer, and I'm the emotions guy. It's time to take back control, control of how you feel, control of how you act, and control of how you experience life. It's time to become a lifer, a new breed of overachiever focused on living every minute to its fullest. We are responsible for how we feel, and no one and no thing can make us feel anything. Emotional mastery is our journey, and emotional education and intelligence is the key. We are lifers, and this is Magic for Life. What's up, lifers? Michael Johnson here with the Magic for Life podcast, and I'm so glad you joined me today because we're going to talk about your products and services. So, you entrepreneurs out there, let's have a little heart-to-heart. Yeah, come in close. So, have you turned your products evergreen? Do you even know what that means? Evergreen. Well, come on, think about it for just a second. Evergreen means that it can keep going and keep doing what it does without you. That's important, right? We want to be able to take a product or service that we're doing and we want it to continue to perpetuate itself without you. And this is why things like continuity or memberships, right? These membership ideas are so popular these days. So if you take into account things like uh, Netflix and the services, uh, streaming services, all of these services these days are evergreen, right? You sign up for Netflix and whether you forget about it or not, it will charge your card next month. Right. And so that's cool. Right. We all would love to have an evergreen or a continuity type product. And honestly, those are really great. Like if you sell a software, great, get it on a monthly and, uh, and do that. Now, what about other products and services? Can you do that? Yes, of course you can do that. Of course you can actually have an evergreen product or service. And a lot of times uh, people get distracted because you see some uh, person that you're watching or following and as entrepreneurs, hopefully you're following a lot of, of people and, and watching what they do, especially people that are in your industry and seeing what successes they have and what they're having success selling and how they're selling it, right? You should always go hack your competitors and make sure you understand what they're doing. Uh, A simple example of that is when McDonald's started selling their drinks at a dollar, right? They said, hey, no matter what size drink, which you would think, right? You would think, well, why would I get anything but a large? And yet the numbers show, right? And it's no doubt. They actually started to make a little bit of money because there were parents that didn't want to buy their children a large drink. So they still show up and they want a medium or a small drink and it's a dollar. They want a large drink, it's a dollar. So they made up for it a little bit on the sizes, right? But they also used it as a loss leader. They used it as a free plus offer. Hey, come and get this dollar drink. And most people were like, I love McDonald's French fries. Those are amazing. I should get some French fries. Now, that's a different uh, conversation altogether. We can talk about offers and we can talk about how to put your product together to get people to come to it. But what we're talking about here is you have a product or service that's working. And what we want to do is we want to get to that holy grail of putting that product or service that's working into a system that leads come to it, right? People that want to buy your perfect customer come to it. They go, Ooh, I want to buy that. They buy it. They go through your little system and then they buy the things that you have in your system. And you would like to have that evergreen. What does that mean? You want it in a machine so that it keeps doing it over and over again, regardless of you. This is beautiful, right? This would be what you're looking for. And so you have to ask yourself, have I created yet an evergreen product or service? And you think, well, I'm in the service industry. I can't do that. Well, that's not true. That's not true. There are lots of different ways to do that. You could create a challenge. You could create a course. You could create any number of information type products. You can create a book. You could create all sorts of things. 
that could be put into an evergreen type of a system. And what you have to ask yourself is, where are you at? Are you in that stage where you're like, hey, just got the book and now we're creating a system to try to get people to it and leads to it and try to get people to buy it on a regular basis and find out the messaging, find out what works, find out what type of offer works. Once you find out, then you go and you put it into an evergreen system. And that's the goal, right? That's the goal with your, your assets that you create is that you want to get those assets into your evergreen system. And, and in the beginning, it might be that it's just a small little system like a funnel, right? Just a, a small little book funnel. You know, I, I pulled out my book, right? You might just have a small book funnel and that might be the system that you have. But maybe long term, maybe you already have that or maybe you already have a bunch of products that you know work that you can already sell to your clients but you need to get in some type of evergreen system, some type of machine that makes it work. And so you have to ask yourself, have I started to transition to an evergreen type of a setup? <clears throat> That's always great. Cause then once you get to that evergreen setup, now you can start to play with your key performance indicators and start to figure out like, okay, well, if I get some more leads to that, will it increase? Or when I put more leads into it, does it not increase what happens to the messaging? Am I making the most amount of money on my margins on the back end? And you could start to tweak it and mess with it, but you've got to get it to a point where it's evergreen. Right. And so you have two different phases, right? Let's, let's try to get our product and service to sell, right? And in some ways that's like, let's make money and get a proof of concept. And then on another end, you're going, okay, now we've got money and the proof of concept. And now let's take that and let's scale it and let's create an evergreen system so that it is automated so that I can just do the thing that I like to do. Right. And that's the next little piece I'll leave you with for today is are you doing the thing that you love to do? Or are you caught up doing a whole bunch of things in your business that you don't like to do? Now, don't get me wrong. You know, I've built startups, right? Magic for Life is a startup, right? I've started from the ground up. We start from the ground up as entrepreneurs and, and, and anytime you've decided you wanted to bootstrap a company, and when you start from that place, you put on every hat and you should. That's good. You got to know your business. You might be the accountant for a while. You might be the person that deals with all the money and everything that goes in for a while. But is that your favorite thing? If it is good, find a way to do that and make sure everything outside of that gets pushed on to somebody else once you've got it into a system and once you understand the process that you're dealing with, right? But it works the same for everything, right? Do you like doing the graphic design? Do you like creating the thumbnails and editing the videos? Or is it just something you need to learn how to do right now and then learn to pass it off, right? This is a big deal. So what are you doing in your business? Are you doing the thing that you love to do in your business or are you doing everything in your business, right? And depending on where you're at, you may need to start to look at, okay, Am I still just in this selling the product and info space or am I starting to move into how can I make that evergreen or what is it? What place are you at? If you need some help and you need some ideas is to figure out like, okay, what phase am I in and how am I doing this? Please send me an email at info at magicforlife.com and let's set up a time to chat because guess what? You might just need some clarity. And if we can get you some clarity around what your actual superpower is, now we can look at it and it's not to say that you're not going to launch a product. It's not to say that you're not going to build the right funnel or that you're going to test your messaging. It's just to say, well, are, do you already have that established? And now we need to start to think about how we can actually get that to an evergreen machine type system so that you can start to put yourself into the position where you're wearing the correct hat. And that's huge, right? Is that you're wearing the correct hat. Long term, if you look at the things that we promote in magic for life we're talking yes about finding your superpower but on the back end we're talking about how can you live the life of your dreams and the business of your dreams because if you're an entrepreneur right now you and i we, we get each other right because we love to quote unquote work people from the outside will look at us and go man you put a, so much how do you work so much 
But when they do that, they're looking at us from an employee set of eyes. And then the employee set of eyes says, I'm going to go put in this amount of hours. And then I'm not going to think about that again because it is not my responsibility. It is that company's responsibility. Right? It is that bosses, it is that owners, it is that startup's responsibility. I'm going to go put in my time. I'm going to go complete my tasks. One, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> And then I'm going to go home and do whatever the heck I want. And you know what? That is the luxury of an employee. That's great. Good for them. That's what they would like to do. But as an entrepreneur, you and I know that we take on the liability. And we better dang well love what we do. And maybe you've had that experience. Maybe you, I have. Maybe you've had the experience where you're like, you know what? Yeah, I can make money doing this. But now it is literally work. It is literally work. And now you find yourself grinding and putting in the time and you're thinking every time you're putting in the time, you're thinking, gosh, if I have to do this one more minute, oh my goodness, if I have to do more of this and you just keep grinding because maybe you still have that entrepreneurial spirit. And so you keep grinding, but it is work. What if you could turn it not into work. See, when people say, oh my gosh, you work so hard, Michael, you put in all these hours, you put in all this time. How do you work so hard? And I'm thinking, oh yeah, I guess, I guess I got to talk about it like that because that's what they say it's called is work. And I'm thinking, it's not work. I love this stuff. This is amazing. I love to do what I do. And so it's not work. It's easy. Sometimes I run out of energy because we're human. We got to eat. We got to sleep. We got to do those things, right? So you just go until you go. And you know, because if you're an entrepreneur and you're pushing hard and you're an overachiever, you've done it and you know exactly what I'm talking about, where you've put in the time and you've put in the effort and other people are looking at you going, holy cow, you are putting in crazy amounts of time and work. How are you doing that? And you're like, I don't know. I just, I just like what I do. I just like what I'm doing. So, Think about these things because if you can get some, some of your products and services turned into evergreen, what would that do for you? How would that change and how would that help you find some magic in your life? How would that help you find that place where you're, you're living your personal, your outside of work life and both of them are like hitting on all five cylinders? How can you create that life that you really want? Well, creating an evergreen product is one of them. That's one of the ways that we can help do that. If you know somebody that needs to hear this message, please share it with them. Please give me a hashtag magic for life on those Instagrams, right? If you can share it on Facebook. And of course, if you're watching on YouTube, please give us a like, a thumbs up, a comment, something like that. Let us know that you're out there. Let us know that you're loving magic for life. And we'll see you on the next podcast. Hey, lifers, we expect upgrades to the base operating functions of the things like our phones, cars, and even refrigerators. Why then has it not been made a priority that we upgrade the operating systems of our emotional states? We dance around the subject of emotional mastery from a young age. We have so much more knowledge in today's world, yet we're still teaching outdated methods of emotional education, if any are being taught at all. It's time for a change. It's time for an upgrade to our emotional education. Let me help you learn how to do that. Pick up your free copy of Every Minute at everyminutebook.com.